Hi again. I have the October 19th Scholastic News in front of me, and I thought I would kind of talk my way through it with you a little bit and um, hope you will join me in reading your copy if you want to pause and, and grab that if you don't have it out. Um, on the cover, we have the cover story, Do You Ever Feel Like This? Raina Telgemeier felt anxious as a kid. Learn how this famous author beat her fears. Now, I haven't read Raina's books, but I know she has had some books that have been popular recently. I think one of them is called Smile. I have a couple in our room, I know. Um, so let's check this out. Do you ever feel anxious? And I have a feeling some of you um, do feel like that. So the, head, the headline story is called It Takes Guts. As you read, when Raina was a kid, what advice did she get about dealing with her fear? Underline the text that tells you. If you like graphic novels, you probably know the name Raina Telgemeier. She's the author and illustrator of some of the nation's best-selling graphic novels. Her latest book is Guts, which tells about her childhood. When Raina was a kid, she worried a lot about getting sick and throwing up. Her fear turned into panic attacks. Her parents took her to a therapist for help. Guts is the story of how she learned to tackle her fear. Recently, Raina spoke with Scholastic Kid reporter Amelia Poor. Here's part of their conversation. So this is an interview, so you'll see Amelia, the interviewer, and then how Raina answers. So I'll probably just say Amelia and then Raina. Amelia, what inspired the book about Guts? Raina, Guts is inspired by pretty much my whole life. I've had anxiety since I was a kid. It's something I've always lived with and never really knew how to talk to people about. I decided it was time to write a book about my anxiety and how I deal with it. Amelia, in Guts, your therapist tells you to try anyway. How has that advice helped you in your life? Raina, a big part of my therapy was dealing with things I didn't want to do. She would say, just try. Foods that I didn't want to eat, she would say, just try them. What's the worst thing that could happen? The more I did those things, the better I felt. It was good for me to see, and this must be Raina, and this is Amelia the reporter, it was good for me to see that the world was not going to end. I think it also applies to writing guts. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do it, but I figured, why not try? Why not just start writing and see what happens? Amelia, you've also written other books about yourself, Smile, and Sisters. Why do you write about your own life? Raina, when I was a kid, I read books about real people's lives. Some were written a hundred years before I was born, but I would think, Wow, this character is just like me. So I know that reading a story about a character that you feel similar to helps you feel better. Amelia, if you could give advice to yourself as a kid, what would it be? Raina, I'd want her to know that she's not alone, even though that's how it felt. At least now I'm able to tell other kids that they're not alone. And then in the side column here, how to go from bleh, to smiling. When Raina Telgemeier feels anxious, she uses this technique. She learned as a kid to relax her body and mind. Number one, focus on your feet, plant them on the ground, and let them anchor you. Number two, breathe deeply. Oh, that helps me when I'm feeling anxious. Focus on your ankles, then your knees, working your way up to, up your body. Take deep breaths as you go. So she's anchoring her feet and then taking a, a breath so deep that she's thinking about filling her ankles and her knees and filling her entire body with deep breath air. Keep it going. After you get to your head, go all the way back down until you reach your toes. Raina says this exercise is just a starting point. If you're looking for ways to handle your feelings, it's important to talk to a trusted grown-up. I know I, I don't have a lot of anxiety, but if I am feeling anxious about something, just taking some deep breaths and letting them out slowly and just trying to sit calmly, um, that helps me sometimes. Those deep breaths and going for a walk can help me. 
um, feel better. So I think everybody can find things that help them, but those are things that help me. Ooh, we have an article here called A Home in Space. What's it like? What's life like on a space station? Take an amazing tour with astronaut Christina Koch. Of course, we have our own local astronaut, Jeff Williams, who has spent time on the International Space Station, which is awesome, cool, a graduate of Winter High School. His dad, by the way, Mr. Williams, was my high school social studies teacher. Awesome teacher. Rumble, roar, those were the sounds of a rocket blasting off from Earth 20 years ago this month. Two days later, that rocket had delivered the first people to live on the International Space Station. The International, I can't talk, the International Space Station is a giant lab that orbits Earth. Orbit means to go around, move, moving around something. In the two decades since, that would mean 20 years, space travelers from more than 19 countries have spent time on the International Space Station. They do experiments, including ones that will prepare astronauts for future missions to Mars. The International Space Station has grown from a few small rooms called modules to a space station the size of a football field. What's life like on the International Space Station? We asked Christina Koch. She returned home to Texas in February after spending 328 days in a row on the International Space Station, longer than any other woman. Oh, let's see if we can read here. I have to open it up a little bit further. Spacewalking. Coach and Jessica Meir made history in October 2019, so that's over a year ago. They became the first all-female team to go on a spacewalk outside the International Space Station. Astronauts can make repairs during spacewalks, and I remember when Jeff Williams did that. He was outside. They're connected um, by cables that hold them so they don't go floating away, but they go outside that space station. These pages explore this part of the International Space Station. Astronauts work out every day in the exercise area. Of course, in space, there isn't the gravity that we have here on Earth, so they're kind of weightless. Sleep tight. Gravity is much weaker in space. That means objects and people float. Astronauts zip themselves into sleeping bags strapped to the walls. That keeps them in place, but their arms still float. It's a lot of fun, as long as you don't mind looking silly, Coach says. Sorry about the glare on my picture here. Get to work. Astronauts do experiments all day, like testing how different foods grow in space. That would be a neat, neat thing to watch, wouldn't it? See how it's different than it is on Earth. Take a seat. Everything floats in space, so the ISS toilets use airflow <laughs> to pull solid waste away from the astronauts and into plastic bags. Otherwise, it would be pretty messy. For liquid waste, we use a little funnel, Coach explains. It all gets captured and recycled back into our drinking water. Interesting. Hmm. A new $23 million toilet like this one is set for delivery to the ISS this year. $23 million. Oh my gosh, I had to repeat that because that is crazy. And here we have some floating food. Look at the different kinds of food that you might eat if you're an astronaut. The ISS doesn't have refrigerators. Astronauts eat a lot of freeze-dried foods that last for months. Sandwiches would float off plates, so most meals are mashed up and slurped from bags. The food is actually good, said Coach. Wow. Ooh, the Halloween challenge. We just had Halloween. Celebrating October 31st with these Halloween fun facts. According to a study, about 29 million Americans dressed up a pet for Halloween in 2019. These were the most popular pet costumes. A pumpkin, hot dog, superhero, bumblebee, and a witch. Which costume was more popular than a witch costume, but less popular than a superhero? More popular than a witch? Less popular than a superhero would be a bumblebee. <laughs> Turnip-o-lanterns. 
The tradition of carving jack-o'-lanterns has a weird history. Long ago, people in Ireland and Scotland carved turnips and put a candle inside. They hoped to scare away ghosts. Later, immigrants who came to the U.S. used pumpkins instead of turnips. Pumpkins are easier to find here and a little larger. Wow. So they started car carving pumpkins instead of turnips because we had pumpkins here. Easier to find them. Oh, a recent survey asked Americans to name their favorite Halloween candy. Reese's, number one. Snickers, number two. Well, I have to admit, those would be my two first picks. I think they're a tie for me. M&M's, mm. number three. Hershey's Milk Chocolate, number four. I don't know. Candy Corn is number five. Does that surprise you? I would have put a Kit Kat or something there, maybe a Twix bar. But I am all about the chocolate, so... Interesting. I wonder what your favorite Halloween candy is. You might have to email me and tell me. I'd be interested to know what your favorite one is. All right. The nose knows. <laughs> um, this dog is learning to detect COVID-19. The training does not put dogs in danger. Isn't that interesting? Dogs are famous for being super sniffers. Their sense of smell is many times stronger than ours. Now some dogs are being trained to use their noses to help protect people from an illness called COVID-19. Dogs are amazing, aren't they? When a person has COVID-19, his or her body makes certain chemicals. These chemicals are in the person's sweat and spit. Recently, scientists in several countries have been teaching dogs to sniff out these chemicals. Scientists plan to put the dogs on duty in public places like airports. The dogs may help identify people who have COVID-19, even if those people don't feel sick. Then those people can stay away from others to avoid spreading the disease. Wow. The noses on dogs can do amazing things. They can detect um, lost children, for example, if they have the scent or a person who's lost um, by um, picking up that smell. I know we have dogs that can detect drugs. Um, whatever they've been trained to detect, their noses are so powerful. Just love dogs. Um, I know some of you might have heard that I did lose um, one of my dogs, my Callie, um, my last big, bigger dog. Um, she was older and she died um, a few days ago on Friday. So it was kind of a rough weekend for me. You guys know that I love my pups and um, so losing one hurts a lot. And, and I know that some of you have shared that... Um, you have lost your pets too, and it's always like losing a member of the family, right? So um, I guess it was her time, and she lived a good life, and we were able to adopt her and give her the life that that she needed, and, and I'm thankful for my time with her, but um, it's hard to say goodbye to those pets, that's for sure. Ooh, text trouble. Drew is hanging out at his friend Danny's house. When Danny leaves the room, a text pops up on his phone. It has Drew's name on it. Drew knows he shouldn't read someone else's texts, but he's curious about the message. What should Drew do? Sticky situation. What would you do? I think you'd have to agree the right thing to do would be not read read someone else's phone. Sure would be tempting, wouldn't it? Those are hard decisions in life, doing the right thing, even if uh, no one is looking. Right. So there are some questions on the back here that you are welcome to try. We have um, a map, a world map. I see the United States here, our country. Here's our continent, North America, with Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Um, over time, 240 people from 19 different countries have visited the International Space Station. This map shows the five countries that have sent the most crew members to the station. Wow, Russia has sent 48, but look at the United States, 151 crew members. So really, it's been all about the Russia, Russia and the United States as far as space travel over the years with other countries not contributing a whole lot. It's very expensive, of course, the space travel and space exploration. Um, so you're welcome to look at those questions and, and try to answer those. There are some multiple choice things here, but I hope you enjoyed our discussion today.